today I'm going to talk to you about boobs, breast or bottle, which one I went for and why. So I always wanted to breastfeed, I don't know why, I just kind of, did my mum breastfeed me? I don't think she did. I don't know, I always just saw it as the norm, that's what you do, you breastfeed until you can't breastfeed anymore and then you bottle. So that's what I did, um, I made the mistake of not reading up about it at all. I. I don't know. I was given the books and I just thought you put the baby on the boob, the baby drinks, you get the milk, that's it. So yeah, massive fails. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. Jasper was born and I was in hospital for two nights and for those two nights it was just such a struggle. He wouldn't latch, he wouldn't, what's it called when they like snuffle around like a hedgehog. Like they try and find it. He would try and find it but he just, he couldn't latch on. Um, so it was really, really frustrating. I was obviously getting worried, and in the end, the nurse said, look, it's been 24 hours, he hasn't had any milk, we're going to need to give him a bit of Aptamil, which I was a little bit upset about, because I thought, no, like, oh, it makes me a little bit emotional now. I didn't want his first, oh, his first milk to be Aptamil. I wanted it to be mine, but I just thought, I can't, <laughs> I can't starve the boy. So, yeah, she gave him a tiny little bit in a syringe while I was, I literally had this syringe on my nipple and I was, like, she told me how to, like, hand express it, <laughs> like, groping my boob, um, to get it, like, it was literally coming out, like, a drop into this thing. I must have had about five drops in this syringe. And you know when you just feel so useless? By the second day, he managed to latch on absolutely fine and he got some milk and then, and I was so happy to like press the buzzer and I was like, he's feeding, he's feeding. And it was a different midwife and she was just like, okay, good. I was just so happy. He was only latching onto one boob and then they wanted me to stay in until he latched onto the other one, just so that they knew that he could go on both. And yeah, the last minute he latched onto the other boob and I called Pete and I was like, come pick me up, we can come home now. So I carried on breastfeeding kind of every three hours. But the biggest mistake that I made was not being consistent. And this is the one thing that I will say, just make sure that you are consistent with your feeds. I would try for every three hours, but if he whinged in between, I'd be like, oh, I'll put it back on. I would maybe do like five minutes on this one, take him off, half an hour later he'd want more, so I'd put him on this boob. Then I'd forget like a couple hours later which boob was I on last, and I'd put him back on the same one. And it just, it was awful. I had mastitis, so my boobs are really engorged. The pain on every single suck that Jasper took, oh, it was awful. I just, I really didn't enjoy breastfeeding at that time. Every time he was hungry and he would cry, I would cry because I knew the pain I was about to have. In the end, it was just on the one boob, but even when I was feeding on the other one, I would cry because I'd think the next feed is this one. Like, oh, it was just, it wasn't nice at all, so... Yeah, mastitis is not fun. I had to have antibiotics. Um, I had cream to put on them because I obviously had cracked and sore nipples then. I had like a hot and cold compress thing to put on them. I had to use a wide tooth comb while I was in the shower to like brush the boob so that the lumps would come out. I'd have to hand express because they, you know, I had to get what was blocked up out. It was kind of um, like this yellowy, stringy goo. It was really disgusting, but that's basically where the milk's all kind of dried up and gotten lodged in there. Um, but yeah, basically what you have to do is try and push that milk out and just get it out. But obviously it's excru not excruciating, but it's very, very painful when you have that. So I'm not saying breastfeeding is painful. I'm just saying if you have mastitis, it is painfull. And the one thing that they tell you to do is keep breastfeed keep breastfeeding through the pain. And it's so much easier said than done. Like, I, I couldn't do it in the end. So I was expressing the boob that had mastitis because that was slightly less painful. And then I was feeding him on the boob that didn't have mastitis. And then I would bottle feed him the expressed milk, which again was one thing that, you know, the first time Pete said, look, we're just gonna have to give him the bottle if, if you can't give him the boob on that side, because otherwise I'd end up using this side all the time. And the same thing would just happen. Like, I'd end up over-producing milk on this side, and then I'd stop producing it on this side, and I'd have wonky boobs, and yeah, it just wouldn't be great. And the first time we gave him the bottle, I was just like, no, you can't do it. But as soon as it's done, you see that the baby then calms down. Jasper was absolutely fine. And then I was like, oh, actually, 
this is quite nice. I could go and have a bath while Pete feeds him. I think it's just that initial, like, someone else is doing it and they're having that bonding time and you kind of feel like they don't need you anymore. I think that's that's definitely how I felt. Yeah. The mastitis then went, but I was still getting the pains and, yeah, he wasn't getting enough milk from my feeds and I was trying to express to kind of make the milk supply go up and it wasn't happening and it just, I don't know, it wasn't great. And then I don't think he was putting on much weight and... He was getting a little bit poorly with things, like he had a, like he had conjunctivitis and he had a little infected finger now and things like that. I think if he had a good like amount of milk in him, he wouldn't have got sick and his immune system would be better. And that wasn't the case at all, but that's just what I thought. So in the end, the health visitor said to me, why don't you do a breastfeed in the morning and then straight after give him a little bottle feed? And then maybe do the same in the evening. So you're still doing all of your breastfeeds, but you're just adding in a few little bottles just to top him up. And I gave him the bottle, he downed it, wouldn't go back on the boob. <laughs> and it was it was one of those things, I was just like, oh no, what have I done? Like I thought I'd ruined it all and I'd never breastfeed again. And I didn't, I haven't breastfed sen- since. I've tried to put him on, not now, but like at that time, I tried to put him back on and he was just like, no, he didn't want it. And yeah, so the kind of the decision was made for me. I wasn't going to breastfeed anymore. He was so much happier. He was fuller for longer. He was just content. He was drinking more. And what I loved is that I could see how much he was drinking. Whereas before I'd think, well, he's been on the boob for about 10 minutes, but I just, I didn't have a clue how much he'd had because sometimes I think he was just comfort sucking. So when he was having the bottle, I could be like, wow, he's had three ounces. And today he's had 20 ounces. And it, yeah, I would say that's a massive, massive benefit of having milk. The fact that you can actually see how much they're having, especially if you are worried about whether they're having too much or too little. I experienced the good parts of breastfeeding, the really nice bonding, and I experienced the really not quite nice parts of breastfeeding, mastitis, engorgement, cracktons or nipples, and, and then the pad would stick to your boob. and ugh. Um, But I'm so, so, so glad that I did breastfeed. I got a good two and a half months worth of it. And, you know, I think even if you just do the first day or, you know, when your milk comes in, that, that first bit of colostrum and then when your milk comes in, the first few bits of goodness. But again, you know, Aptamil, it's it's got all of the goodness of breast milk. It's the closest thing to breast milk that there is. Or, I mean, I'm not sure about Cow and Gate and, is it Hip? I can't remember the other ones. I'm sure they're all absolutely amazing. I just went for Aptamil because it's what they used in the hospital. So it's the first thing he ever had. So I knew that he was okay with it. But yeah, I think whatever decision you make, there are pros and cons to both of them. But ultimately, it's whatever's best for you and the baby. When you watch those adverts on TV for Aptamil and say like, doctors advise that breast milk is best, but if you don't breastfeed, then use Aptamil. And I just think that's so hard for people that can't breastfeed from the beginning or, you know, they're really against it or just, you know, I know people that their parents didn't breastfeed them and their grandparents didn't breastfeed their parents. So it's just not the norm for them. And I think it's not nice for those people to be told, well, breastfeeding is best. Even though I'm, ah, oh, it's so difficult. I know that it is, it is best scientifically, but ultimately, if you're breastfeeding, you're in pain, your baby's not latching on, you're both getting stressed and upset, who's that best for? You know, there. I think if you really want to go for your child's best interests and yours, you need to go for whatever makes you most comfortable. And if that means you're solely breastfeeding, you're solely bottle feeding, half and half, then that is the best option for you. That is my breastfeeding and bottle journey. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.